Now I will use these tables as lists for our data validation. Okay, so I want that this column family member only has names that are part of the list of family members. So for example, home would not be a good entry for this column. So let me do that again. I came here and I selected the entire column just once. I'm not selecting the header of the column. And now I go to data, data validation. And from here, I choose list and I say, I want a list to allow values that are part of a list in a certain source. For this source, I could come here and type in Mark, Monica, Thomas, all those names separated by a comma and those that my list would be created. But I like to have those lists in tables because then if I need to add another item, it's much easier to update there. So I'm going to just point to the entire column. I get this reference here as a cell reference. It doesn't mention the name of the table, but we can test if this reference will be dynamic as the table grows or shrinks. Okay, let's click there and then okay. And we can see now that I have my options here. So start, the only alert I get is, for example, here, the options that are not part of the list now have an alert there. It can depend on the different settings of the system, Excel options you have. But for me, it's showing that this, if I over over that, it says the value in this cell is invalid or missing. So it's not, it's invalid for the data validation rule that I have in place there. It helps seeing those values that are not valid, but another way of doing it could be come to the table column and come to here, the data, and then in data validation, click the drop down there and we have circle invalid data. Click there. And as we scroll down, we can see where the data is not correct. So now I could say, uh, this is a car maintenance expense. How should I then amend this entry to fit the new rules that I now have in place and those lists and all that. So I could probably copy this over there as a maintenance, as a description, the car would be a category and then I can decide the member of the family that uh, he's associated with this expense. It could be either one of the elements in the family, or I can consider that this expense is a, an expense that serves the entire family. So I could maybe add family there. So we could now go through all the errors here. When I did this, the circles disappeared. So I kind of have to do that again. And something that you should be aware if it hasn't changed in recently is that the circle validation tool will only circle up to 200 invalid values. So if you have a very long list of data, you need to know that only up to 250 invalid values will be circled. You need to go and test over and over again until you are sure that you went through all the values that do not obey to the data validation rule. So now it was a matter of moving things from this column to that column, from this column to that column, moving them or amending them as we want. So let's just create the other, let me remove the data validation circles, data validation, clear data validation circles there. And for the other list, uh, we could do the same thing. I'm just going to create the data validation a little bit differently so that you can see both methods. Before that, like, let's check that if we add an extra name here, let's say Celia there, I have an extra name. I pointed to that column. Let's see if my name shows up here. It shows there. So that cell reference is when we set up the data validation is dynamic because Excel knows I'm using a table. Although you need to be careful. 
if you are using an older version of Excel, I'm using Excel for Microsoft 365. If you point to the range and the range is the entire column of a table, I am not sure if the table expands, the data validation will grab the new elements in the table. You need to confirm that on your end if you are using another Excel version different than mine. Let's go and see here. The other way of doing this, and I, I prefer this one. In fact, it takes a little bit more of work and one extra step, but I like it better. I select the entire column and in the table, and then I come to here, formulas, and then name manager, and I create a new name. And because I'm creating a list, I like to start the name with LST underscore and then I would put categories and then I can choose this name let me copy that copy and you can see that it uses the name of the table and the name of the column inside the table and this is saying this name refers to that entire column in that table it doesn't matter how big or how small the column is and here let's go to the long table tab and here where we have our categories select the entire column without the header and let's go to data data validation and allow a list and the source i could now use equal and the name of my field i can also just do F3 and it picks up, pops up the names available. I, cho I choose the one I want and that's it. I like it better this way because if I am coming back to this work at a later date, I can come and see LST categories. Okay, for me, it makes more sense than seeing, I don't know, C12 to C44 or to work with names. It's my personal preference. So, okay. So now the same type of work. You would have to go through this entire column, looking at these errors and considering each one of them. We could also circle valid data. Okay. So that's there. That's good. Circle invalid data and amend all the errors we we need to amend so that's a work of patience and persistence personality traits that any excel developer needs okay <laughs> don't give up so clear data validation circles and so after doing all this work our data would be pretty much cleaner clean or cleaner than it is now and uh, then it could help us doing the, the reporting that we need to do.